I'm Elizabeth Warburton and welcome to Series 5 of Property Elevator, the show where we give budding property developers the chance to pitch their deals to our five seasoned property professionals. Paul Mahoney, Ranjan Bhattacharya, John Howard, Helen Chorley and Nicholas Warwick, or who we call our property investment angels. This show gives our pitchers the opportunity to walk away with a partner, or maybe even two, who will bring not only finance, but also knowledge to the deal, taking their property journeys to the next level. This is Property Elevator. Hi, I'm John Howard, and I've been a property developer and investor for over 40 years. During that time, I've bought and sold over 4,000 properties, and I've developed in 78 different locations across the UK. In your view, yeah. that's yeah. the realistic figure, 150 pounds a foot. Whether it's realistic in our, our figures, that's yeah. different. Hi, I'm Paul Mahoney. I'm the founder of the UK's leading property investment advisory company, and I've been an investor and developer for over a decade. So I assume the 350 that's referred to here, is that the existing JV partner or is that you? I'm Nicholas Woolwork developer, mentor, and globally published author of Investing in International Real Estate for Dummies. It sort of looks like the perfect deal, but then you sort of get into the, get into the detail, and I think it starts to unwind itself. My name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. I've been investing and developing properties for the last 30 years. I specialize in taking defunct commercial buildings and converting them to alternative uses. Uh, I mean, the way you've presented it is fantastic. Yeah. The way the options that you've presented are poor, and that's why these guys have said what they've said, and I agree with them. Hello, my name is Helen Chorley, and as a former investment banker, I've been in finance and property for over 25 years. Talk me through that, because just intuitively it feels yeah. optimistic and low. Welcome to the penultimate episode of Series 5. We've done some amazing deals so far, but let's get some more done today. So we have a duo. Welcome to Property Elevator. Thank you. Hello. Thank you very much for joining us. Can you give us a little introduction, who you are, where you've come from today? So my name is Joel and this is Nicole. We're both town planners and hopefully we can get a deal today. So Nicole, tell us a little bit about the deal that you've brought today for our angels. Um, so we're proposing a new build um, project um, in Preston in the Northwest. Okay. Um, Joel currently works out there doing his own property development projects there. So we're just hoping that we can get another project there and the angels will want to be part of this one this time. Brilliant. So how much funding are you looking for today? We're looking for £950,000 today. Okay. And is there anybody in particular that you would really like to partner up with on the deal? Um, we would be happy with any of the angels. Mm -hmm. We know that John quite likes a new build okay. uh, development and we know that he likes to have majority share. So we've kind of structured the deal to see if he would be interested in it, but we'd be happy with any of the angels. Great. Well, I'm sure John will be very happy to hear that. Hopefully. <laughs> well, good luck. Thank We're going to send you in shortly and I can't wait to see how you get on. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Tell us about the deal you brought us today, please. Okay, so, good afternoon, angels. Um, my name is Nicole and this is Joel. We're here to ask for £950,000 for 51% stake in our proposed new build development in Lower Bertle in Preston. Uh, so the land has outlined planning permission for four dwellings. So Joel has a site 20 minutes away in Chorley where he got planning permission and he's building it out now. And what we want to do is use those high types for a reserve matters application on this site that we found so we think the total cost of the development will be 1.9 million pounds with a GDV of 2.6 million pounds um, so what we need a 950 for is so the land is advertised at 500,000 pounds but we've spoken to the agent and they said if we give an unconditional offer we can get the land for 450,000 pounds now we're anticipating the reserve matters application will cost 107,000 pounds this is to include seal and discharging conditions etc and then that the rest of the money will be using to get to at least foundations and footings Right. Um, so Lower Bartle is part of a wider strategic allocation. So the northwest of Preston has been allocated for 5,300 dwellings. 
and that includes new primary schools, uh, a secondary school. There's going to be a new Eastern Link Road that will link you to the M55. So currently it takes 15 minutes to get to the M55. With this new Link Road, it will take you five minutes. There's a site that's been built out currently um, and it was done in two phases. So three dwellings and then seven dwellings. So the three dwellings were sold um, between 2020 and 2021 and they sold um, from 515 to 600,000 pounds. Um, there was one that was sold for £565,000, which we believe will be at a value of £713,000 now. Okay. So the seven dwellings, unfortunately, there's no land registry information no. for us to look at. But when they were advertising it, it was marketed at £689,000 for each um, dwelling. And they all average around 2,100 square foot, which is similar to what uh, Joel is doing in his trolley site. So basically, we've established the fact that the, the the area is is good and the sale prices are pretty pretty good as well okay and that they know their comparables and that they know their comparables yeah. first of all can i just congratulate you on this amazing pack i yeah. mean thank you oh, thank i mean you. It, it, it's it's absolutely phenomenal to helen can i just say <laughs> helen is beside herself so that's uh that's fantastic. The second thing is, you know, you're both town planners, very, you know, very well qualified, which is congratulations to you both. Thank you. That's, Thank that's, you. that's great to, to have um, two young people of, with those qualifications come to meet the angels and, and, and to pitch. Can you just give us the really basic numbers? Total build costs, uh, 1.9 million. GDV, 2.6 million. Angel stake, 51%. Total profit, will be 644,510 and then it would be a 51%, 49% yep. split. <clears throat> Very generous, give us control. Well, yeah. I think actually that's something that some of the other um, potential pictures could, uh, could learn from. I've seen John and John likes to take the big deal. So I said to Nicole, let's give him the big deal. Yeah. That'll go far. Yeah. He, likes, he, he always <laughs> says he wants to take the bigger, yeah. the 51%. Yeah, so yeah. that's what yeah. we're giving him. Yeah. Second question and yeah. last question for me at the moment is, you mentioned about just taking it to foundation level. What's the theory behind that and, and why don't you want to build it out? Oh, we, we do want to build, want it, to build out. it out. But but, go on, well, go. So the other half of the money, so it's 1.9 million, so 950 oh, okay. from Angels. 950, we were going to get development finance. Joel and I have done projects and we've used Bridging Finance yeah. and we spoke to the underwriter at that Bridging Finance company and they said that they can offer us up to 70% of the 1.9 million of the total project cost. Yeah. So we thought if we could get Angels to help us get purchase the land do the reserve matters and get to foundations and footings, it would be easier to then just get the bridge and finance to help complete the whole build and then yeah. we'd put it under okay. market. Yeah, I understand. Um, Helen? Um, do you know the site, by the way, personally? Or? I don't, but I definitely like the area that it's in. It's where I'm from and I really like the council because obviously... It has the same name. <laughs> great name, what can I say? <laughs> um, I like the look of the numbers. So from the numbers that you've given us so far, it's 32% return on cost and 25% return on GDV. What do you see? And you know, we've, we have we literally get 10 minutes to review this, so we haven't been through every page and we yeah. see there's a lot of appendices in there, so great detail. What are the main risks on this? The main risk is that there's a lot of development happening. So there's going to be a lot of housing coming there. Right. We, I've taken it, because I've come from a strategic land background. I When I work for my company, I take that as a good thing. It's like if there's development there, then we can get development there. But that also comes as a risk because there's going to be a lot of other housing products yeah. there. That is why we have priced it at 650 um, with 150 square foot build cost. Is that what you're currently building your other site? No, I've got it for cheaper, 140 pounds per square foot. And we're on site building already. And you have Build, you have good builders that are willing to sign a JCT. Yep, yep. At that. Yep, 100%. Might have to get their details. <laughs> no worries. We've just said 150 because we know construction costs are going up a lot at the moment. Yeah. I mean, and that, and yeah. the reason I say yeah. that is most builders are at 200 plus, uh, yeah. especially for you know, better quality stuff. Yeah. So I work for quite a big house and they, do, they are at 200. Um, but we build in the south. South, yeah. yeah. And I, I've also seen this 
like in the south, the construction costs are so much higher. Yeah. Uh, just to let you know, in Machuli site, it's a much more complicated site. It's on a gradient. We've had to do an S185, a sewer diversion, and we have had to take over 100 tonnes of mark away because of the split. gradient, and it's on a split level. So That's a complicated site. It's a very complicated site. So this is the Preston land we're talking about right now, it's to me, simpler. is a very simple yeah. site. Okay. What's the uh, project duration? How long uh, is it? Until 24 months total, 24 months, including so. getting reserve matters and discharging all the conditions. Yeah. So those returns are basically over a two year period yeah. of being in the deal. Have you considered um, modular construction for these houses? N no. No. <laughs> no, we haven't. It will certainly be more expensive, Anja, I would say. I mean, it works more in the south, I think, because of bill costs mm. for me. Getting the pre the pre commencement conditions signed off Yes. Is a nightmare. Yes. I in my know. view. Yeah. At the moment. And it's taken a long time to be able to do that. Um, the council here, have you got, because obviously you're working already up there. So have you got some knowledge of, of how easy they are to work with? Because that always makes me nervous when I have to deal yeah. with councils. I've been working with Chorley Council yeah. for the past year. And you know what? I've got all my conditions discharged. They're good very relationship good. with them. Yeah, very yeah, good relationship good. with them. Okay, that's but good. if you're like like every every organisation, when you put pressure on them and you're not nice to them, you're gonna you're going. My advice road. to anybody and anyone listening uh, to the show is that always treat your local authority with great respect. Yes. Um, great politeness. And um, and that's the best way to yeah, get yeah. No, uh, decisions 100%. made because I know a number of people get incredibly frustrated and, and that doesn't help at all. So I agree entirely with you. Something you did mention as being a risk, which I think it might be, mm -hmm. is, is the GDV. In okay, that yeah. You mentioned just before that a house was built for 560 and is now worth 730 over 12 months, that's 25% uplift. Um, so that's toward the upper end of what's happened in the UK over the past 12, yeah, 18 yeah. months, you know. So yeah. this area is obviously growing out, which is great. But it also means there's probably a higher likelihood of a higher amount of softening in the market okay. over the next 12 to 18 months, which is well within your time frame for building. So I suppose how do how do we account for that risk, that, that it might come down by 10, 15% over that time frame? The reason why I said 650 was because I saw that the other, other houses were marketed at 689. Unfortunately, I don't have the land registry information to tell you that it was sold for 689. But I thought that we were accounted for that risk by not saying it's going to be sold for six, eight, nine. So you've allowed, you've allowed Nicole, you've allowed some, some yeah. wiggle room in those figures. Yeah. Uh, what I'd like to have seen is a letter or two from an agent. Yes. Yeah. Saying, look, you know, this is what we think we can sell okay. these for. You know, it, it just gives us all, it gives all a little bit more confidence probably. Um, as it would a, 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 a QS report saying what it's going to cost to build as well. I hear what you say and you're doing it up there, so that's great. So you're at 328 for an average ask price um, for the area for um, 328 pounds per square foot, because then you can then you can work out, you can, can compare apples and apples. Um, so if you've got 650, yeah. She's on a calculator, that's serious. <laughs> Look out. Um, Look out. Troubles about. Yeah, it's about 2,000 square foot. Yeah. And that's what we're looking at, really. Yes. Yeah. We, we don't want to make it too big. If we're making no. it big, build costs are going to go up as well. I yeah. agree. And that's it. And that's exactly what John's saying. And that's where you need to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's that, that kind of that fine balance. OK. You've you found a site here which has already got planning. Yeah. You are two incredibly talented young, bright people who have got a skill set, a, a, have got a degree in town planning. You know, I, I just think this is a bit too simple, that any builder could find this and do this. And I think you're brighter and better than that, um, if you get my meaning. There's no pleasing you today, John. If they come in without planning, you won't invest. Uh, if they come in with planning, no, no, but they've got a, what I, I'm saying I, I is tend to agree with John. It kind of defeats the purpose of their skill set. Yeah. I, I agree with that. It's already done. Yeah. We yeah. still have to do reserve matters. We can't discount matters. Still have to still make it happen. Matters. I agree. And my planning consultant bangs on and on and on and on. <laughs> 
And I said, I'm not interested in reserve matches, just get it sorted. But um, I know exactly what I mean. There is a lot of work to do from this point. And actually, you make a good point because so many people think, oh, it's got outline consent, yeah. it's, it's done. It's not, not. done. No. You're absolutely right. Yeah. If this didn't have planning, I'd be so, so confident that you would get the best possible planning for it. And I would suggest getting the planning and selling it. Okay. Because I think in this area where you've said there has been quite a big uplift in prices, it's a fairly uncertain sort of from here on is a fairly uncertain period in my mind, especially for areas that have been at the upper end of growth. Okay. Um, and I think 24 months, nobody in this room knows, nobody in this country knows where we're going to be in 24 months with regards to prices and costs. And costs go up, prices are likely to come down, that squeezes the profit. It's, it, the total profit is 30% on the investment you're asking for from the, the angels. Yeah. So it's actually only 15% sharing at 50-50. Now over 24 months, that means it's actually only 7.5% per annum. Um, so it's pretty tight. My number's right there? Uh, no. Okay, go, sorry. You just, like that. No, you just divided it once too much. The, uh, our bit of it would be 34.5% ah, okay. total return, but, but it is, it still is over, over two years. years. Yeah. So you still are at max 17. So, you know, this the, might be for one of the, the other guys, the but for me, right. it's definitely toward the upper end of what I would be comfortable putting into a, a one, one development. And for those reasons, I just feel a little bit uncomfortable with this particular deal. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ranjan, would you like to go next? Um, this is not for me for the reasons stated. I, I, I don't really like uh, investing in deals once the planning permission's got. I like to be in before that, um, because basically you make money here from the build out. I have every faith that you guys um, are, you guys, you guys would certainly be able to manage the build out to um, uh, effectively and all of that. But for the build-out phase, there just isn't enough in it for two years. You're great people, and we should come with a better deal. Okay, thank you. Thank you. When, when did your last build start, can I ask? January. January, so... It, 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 with the problem is it takes a long time. When you start talking to United Utilities, you get your S185. Oh, one tell me, we know. It just, it's just so the long, very guys. first thing to do on <laughs> yeah. any site, any new development or any conversion, Sort the utilities out from day one because they take forever. The utilities being the electric, gas, water, whatever it might be. The point I'm trying to make is that that was nine months ago. Yeah. I think in another six to nine months when you are likely you've got your yeah. reserve matter sorted or your preconditions yeah. uh, discharged, I think your builder's going to turn around and say I'm 175 to 200 pounds a square foot. I'm not in because it's too much development risk. Yeah. Um, I think you guys should be going and sourcing land with options with yeah. very little money down adding the planning, even JVing with the owners of the land, and then flip it on to a developer to go and take the risk on the construction. Um, so it's not for me, but I think you've got a, a great future and uh, wish you all the best with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. This, a few years ago, would have been right up my strata. I've done a lot of stuff like this with varying results. Uh, so I have a lot of experience in this area. For the reasons that Paul has stated, we think a lot alike, 17%-ish, um, per annum return for an equity stake it, it's not a good enough return for me that that's not really even meds return levels and here I'm talking about the capital stack so I don't think the return is really what I'd look for um, and I agree with the guys that you have upside risk on cost i.e they might rise and you have downside risk on prices so they might drop a bit but I'm not gonna feed the money but what I will offer you is something I've never I've never offered anybody, not on the show and actually not outside of the show either. I don't do mentoring, don't do training, don't do any of that. But I just have this feeling about you two. <laughs> and I'm already, I've thought of at least four people that I need to connect you with to get better and more savvier, especially about what Nick said about um, the land and JV and with land owners and how to structure those deals. And I, I think you two are going to go places. So I will, if you want to, have a monthly call with you, help you on this. Not mentor you, but but be there as a, as a guide and a, and a support for you. Well, thank yeah, you so much. It's that. very kind yeah, of yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Unless you get another offer. I'm tempted to say yes to this deal just to work with you too. Yeah, no. Not 
thinking it ain't going to be as good as you think because I don't think it will be as good as you think. But I'm tempted, sorely tempted, to work with you on this, buy this, work with you on this, purely for the future deals we can do together. You don't need to worry about Helen and her mates <laughs> because you've got me. What am I going to do? You've got to invest in the deal, John. It's the deal, yes or no? I know the rules, Nicholas. I wrote them. <laughs> <laughs> Which means you can break them whenever you want. <laughs> I'm not often, and the rest of everyone here will, 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 will I'm sorry, uh, confirm it. I'm very rarely sat here thinking, what shall I do? I'm going to say no to this deal, but what I do want to do, I want to back the two of you going forward on funding, finding sites, some of which we'll build out because I know that's your passion and that's what you want to do. I'm not interested in doing that particularly, but if you are, that's fine. I'm willing to help fund those deals as long as we sell some, some land and do, and then we can build some as well. So. I'd like to have a call with you both in the next couple of days to seriously put down some plans to see what we can do together. Brilliant. But it's a no today. Yeah, no, those are the two offers on the table. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's literally, Helen's got some great contacts and, and a very genuine people she can introduce you to. Uh, what I'm saying, uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with that at all, and that's very kind of Helen to do that. What I'm saying is, you know, I think we could, we could start a, um, a business together, finding finding sites, which I'm not very good at, but you two are, finding sites, getting planning on them, developing some and selling some. That's what I'm saying. And have a call with you in a couple of days, have a think about it and see whether we can form some sort of company to move forward. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. No today. Today. Thank you very much for your it's time. It's an absolute Thank you for pleasure. Well done. Great pitch. Well done. Thank Great you. pitch. Yeah. So, how was the experience for the both of you? Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, it was a really positive experience. We didn't get investment, but hopefully we've met um, some really good contacts and we've still got a bright future ahead of us, I think. Absolutely, yeah. 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 No, I didn't realise we could just offer people calls. <laughs> yeah. You can't sell offering calls. I thought we were offering funding. <laughs> We I'll are offering funding, but I, I'm courses, very frustrated yeah. <laughs> because literally I was very sorely tempted just to do the deal, just to have a just to work with yeah. these guys oh, because I, I thought they were, they uh, you know they've got everything going for them. They're qualified. Look at the pack they've done. You know they they're on the ball. The bit that they don't have in their locker, I have in my locker, and the sales. The sales, the figures. It's just the, it's the wrong type of development the, for the current market, you know, isn't it? Yeah, they've got they've got a lot, a lot more to offer than that. Because yeah. anyone could pick that up and and come to us and say, look, it's on the market. There's no angle. It's like it's there, like the juice has Too been simple. taken out by the the planning already. Yeah. But exactly, yeah. they are. I just yeah. I have this funny feeling that they're just going to smash this. I agree, and they're nice okay. people. They're genuine, decent people. One of the reasons why we do the show, isn't yeah. it? Even yeah. though the deal wasn't quite what we wanted we've met two inspiring young people Absolutely. and that's what it's about it really is i think yeah. that is worth saying actually yeah. just because things don't happen on the show no. we all know for all of us things yeah. have happened off the show or they've led yeah. to things so exactly. no. it's beautiful no. the show fantastic anna welcome to the show Thank you so much. I'm full time in, in property, uh, especially development. I do conversions and I'm very much into service accommodation. Brilliant. And so, yeah, today's deal, it's exactly in that space, um, conversion to flats. Okay, excellent. Into the service accommodation model. May, might be, might be. Okay, nice. So how much investment are you wanting today from our angels? It's going to be a 50-50 JV and I'm looking to um, to get around 700,000. I have, uh, the deal have uh, different propositions. Uh, I present, I'm going to present two different options. So it's a little bit depending on that, but in, in the range of 700,000. As you can see, this is the, the this, that's the property. It's a commercial property, but uh, but which was originally uh, residential. 
It is a shop on the ground floor and uh, offices on the um, on the first floor. The property is uh, Ealing, uh, in Ealing Council. It's in Southport, very close to the uh, train station, which is the now the uh, Elizabeth Line uh, station. is basically three minutes walk on the main commercial road, which is leading to the. Uh, uh, to the uh, to the Broadway, which is the the, um, the the high street basically of Southall. I brought two different propositions. One is to convert it uh, to flats, so it's it's purely residential conversion, and the other one is a conversion with uh, um, with a commercial aspect to keep the uh, the shop to make it smaller, reduce the space of the shop, but keep the the, the retail part of it on the ground floor. Uh, the conversion will be on the class MA and on the planning permission. Basically, the current asking price is uh, 1.25 million. Uh, I discussed that with the commercial agent who is managing that, and I put an offer on 850, which was not rejected. So we are still in the discussions of that. And uh, when it comes to GDV, it depending on the proposition, as you might have seen before, so it's 1.85 to uh, 2 million, with a profit, as I say, above uh, 500,000, between five and 700,000. When it comes to the, the funding, so basically I'm looking for 50-50% 50, 50 um, joint venture. So I'm looking for someone who could uh, bring the, the second half to the deal, which would be around uh, 700,000. So a little bit depends on the, of course, on the proposition, but that would be 50%. And then 50% uh, profit uh, split at the end of the project. Is there a single story extension on the ground floor? Yes. There is, okay. It's very, very big. The thing about that single story, on the floor plans, mm -hmm. it's not quite clear yes. where the windows are. Yes. on the ground floor yes. and uh, which which walls kind of back onto neighbouring walls or which walls back onto somewhere where you could put windows. Um, where is the natural light in that rear extension? Have you seen that? There is no there? natural light. There's no natural light at the Yeah, back, yeah, not, not at the moment. You, you mentioned you need 700,000 from one of us or what it, yeah, from the Angels. Correct. Um, and are you putting in the same? Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. so it's equal cash? Yes. yes. Okay, that, that's, that's good. Um, have you thought about perhaps financing the, the deal as opposed to just all cash, funding all the costs with cash? Mm -hmm. Yes, I was thinking about this. It would be possible, basically. I just think from, from the Why perspective I'm of here... the investors, it probably would be slightly more attractive. I can only speak for myself, of course, but uh -huh. I would have thought it would be slightly more attractive uh, to fund 60, 70% of the costs, which essentially you know, more than halves the requirement of cash. Ah, you mean you mean to finance to to have a finance? Correct. Yeah, I was I, I thought that for the purchase itself that would be much better to finance it with cash, especially that if you especially would Paul's pack cash. <laughs> <that would be laughs> <awesome. laughs> with regards to the time frame of ten to twelve months, would you say that's quite optimistic? I I think it's realistic. It's uh, eight weeks uh, planning permission uh, to start with. Then which, 56 which council days. is it? No chance. Ealing. No Ranjan, Nicholas, you know about <laughs> um, councils. Helen, I'll yeah. come no. on to that in a moment. I think <laughs> never heard a council do it in eight weeks before. Never pre-app if you're lucky to get that in eight yeah. weeks. Yeah, that won't happen. That, but that's realistically four to six months, isn't it? Yeah. To do a separate self-contained flat in the roof space uh, will be nigh on impossible because that would come under London plan and a whole bunch of things. But when you talk about a planning application to make alterations to the commercial unit on the ground floor, mm -hmm. such as partial demolition mm -hmm. and some knocking in some windows at the mm -hmm. rear, yes. that should be relatively straightforward. Mm -hmm. So not all planning applications are the same, basically. Yeah. GDVs of the f studio mm -hmm. flats, yes. um, the comparables that we've got um, are pretty much for one bedroom flats. Mm -hmm. And these will be studios mm -hmm. uh, on the ground floor and they will be um, at the lower end of the studio scale because of the, uh, the outlook that you'll be able to have in terms of windows and all the rest of it. So I'm just wondering what comparables, direct comparables mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. for studios behind shops, because I think some of the comparables here mm. are more for normal one bedroom flats. But basically the comparables also here, if you, if you can see, it's a, it's a huge difference. It's a 223 
355 or 353, let's say, for one bed. Uh, when, when you look at this, you have to take into account that I couldn't get this just for the postcode. Mm -hmm. So this is for the whole area, basically, for the whole locality. So they are both apartments which are just three minutes walk to the station as this one. Uh, and, uh, uh, and the flats which are one hour away from the, from the station. So but what's, if the, I'm what's the pound per square foot on that road? I, I don't have it for that road, but in general for the, the, the central locations, mm. it's around uh, five, 500, um, 580. It's like an average 580 per square foot. Studios are easy to rent out. They're hard to sell and they're hard to mortgage. Um, so not a big fan of studios myself. Um, I think there's quite a bit of risk in the planning and the time frame around that planning with this one. And PD isn't my area of expertise. Um, so for those reasons, it's not for me. For very similar reasons. And yeah, I just don't have confidence in, in the numbers that, that you have. But I love your confidence and I hope you achieve those, but it's not for me. Okay. Thank you. Nicholas has been very quiet, Anna, which is unusual for him. Would you like can't, to go next, Can't get Nicholas? a word in it, Joey. Well, <laughs> I think Anna, had, lots of those, of, Anna had a lot to say, to be fair. I'm, I'm, I'm still, still pondering. I thought you might. That's interesting. That's good news for you, Anna, I think. Uh, Ranjan? Um, okay, th this one is not for me for a number of reasons that we discussed. I don't think we'll get the flat in the top. No. And I, I would be looking at this from a, pop, from a view of selling on the flats. Um, and I, I, I just think they're not really the type for sale. Um, if this was in one of my target areas, I would look at doing this as a refinance and keep because yes, these flats uh, would be highly uh, rental. That's one of uh, Anna's I'm, I'm options. I'm sorry because this yeah. is, yeah, maybe I haven't mentioned this one, but I would like to keep, I can keep all the, all the units myself. I don't have a problem with this because I'm investing in this area. So I'm confident in that. Mm -hmm. There's not a, we don't know enough about what might happen here. Um, the top floor, I listened to Ranjan because he's got a lot of experience in this side of things. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm cautious about the top floor. I think there's a better way of, of presenting this deal, to be honest with you, because you may well get the tenant on the ground floor to sign a 10 new 10 year lease. That would make it worth, a, you know, good money. Um, so I'm not sure you brought it quite in the right presentation. And really for that reason, Today, I'm going to say no. So, Nicholas. I really don't know what to do here. Ooh. Because you're highly investable. I'd, I love, know. To, I'd, <laughs> I'd love to work I can with tell you. you. <laughs> and this is a really horrible property in many ways that the guys have discussed. I don't mean that in terms of the way you've presented it. I mean that it's just got a lot of problems to overcome. You know, it, can we convert the roof? We don't really know. Can we get a decent rent for the commercial? We don't really know. Um, with the floor plans, it seems you can only get windows on the bit where you've demolished the interconnecting part on that front fascia where there's a little courtyard and nothing down the side. So then you definitely can't get four studios. You probably get two flats, one on each floor. They might have to be slightly bigger. You might get away with a secondary bedroom with a roof light if you're really lucky. Um, but lighting issues under PD, you know, will need to be proven and researched. Um, so it's really, it's really tricky. I mean, the GDV could be anywhere. Well, can you make your mind up, please? Um, I think it's a good. I think it's a good profit. Uh, yeah, you know, it's anyway. It's, day, a, it's a good profit in the in the deal. Even if you have any hesitations to this, I mean, that is, is, is still a lot can be done. Okay, it's too risky for me to put any serious money into this. But what I will say, oh God, it's tricky. It's a yes or no, Nicholas. Okay, I'm going to give you a lifeline and it'll, I'll top up your money, mm -hmm. but we need to take development finance to cover a big mm -hmm. chunk of the buy. If we do that, I'll put some of my time into it and work with you on it. That's my only offer, I'm afraid. Um, I don't want to put in 700 grand, no chance. Um, but if we can use finance and we can make money out of it and we can mm -hmm. de-risk some of the things on here before exchange, mm -hmm. um, I'm interested because I quite like a challenge. Is that a yes or no? <laughs> that's a yes, that's an offer, but we must take finance on, on the purchase. So, I'll top so, up any finance that Okay, we can so get. Anna, mm -hmm. the, the offer you have is that Nicholas would like to partner you on a joint venture, but he's insisting that there's development finance involved and not purely cash. Would that be a fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah, minimise all of our investment, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's an so offer. That's an offer. Um, that's the only offer on, you've got today. On a 50 50 basis, sorry, okay. I should yeah. say. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, so well done. Let's <laughs> see where we can get it. Let's hope we can prove them all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so, Anna, how did you get on? Very well. Very well. I'm very happy. I've got a deal from uh, Nick. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, so, uh, so some of the some of the angels were not that comfortable with uh, the new PD rights. And also they saw some risks in the deal, which is absolutely great to have a feedback. That's why I'm here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we've got the deal. So we're going to discuss it later, how to move on. Never been so undecided on a deal. Or we couldn't offer. tell. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, I kept quiet. I didn't, I, I don't think I hardly answered the question to start with. One early one. Um, but, um, I mean, I know Anna and she's a very bright, articulate, yeah, very clever lady. And um, yeah. I just think she didn't do a, herself justice in a way because I think she needed perhaps more time mm. to work the deal out in a better way. Yeah. But I think she could have presented it better. You saw through that and I think yeah, potentially exactly. you've got a great deal. But as it was on the day, um, you know, I think the rest of us felt probably did we well, you kind of helped her repackage it a little bit in the yeah, way it, it should have been presented. yeah exactly yeah uh, just in the, the summary. if she's willing to put that much cash in she doesn't actually need that much from us but probably wants a partner she needs help she needs she, advice she needs to be willing to listen to you so hopefully yeah yeah she, she does need to, yeah. to, to listen. she's a great entrepreneur i think yeah. the deal's a dog i didn't realize we were buying pets yeah. But, uh, uh, best of luck. Listen, the jokes are getting better. Can I just say the jokes, like are, jokes, getting, the jokes <laughs> are getting better, and that's that's saying something. <laughs> Adam, hello, and welcome to Property Elevator. Hiya. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Good. Yeah, you feeling a bit nervous? nervous? But, yeah. Tell me a little bit firstly about your deal. It's a HMO deal. Okay. Down in uh, Devon, Newton Abbott. Um, needs a full refurb, um, but it would work really well in that sort of area, rentability-wise and refurb-wise. Brilliant. Um, and I'm local to the area now, so. Adam, crack on with the pitch. We need to know what it is, how much you're paying for it, and what you need off us. Sure, cool. So I'm here today uh, to ask for 400,000 um, to buy this six-bedroom HMO-style property in Newton Abbott in South Devon. Um, the property was previously used as a HMO by an association that was housing vulnerable people in there, but they since stopped trading in the area and trying to sell this one off from their portfolio. Um, so because of that, it does have fire doors, fire alarms, all, all the, those things in place to be compliant as a, as a HMO. Newton Abbott in, in uh, the Teambridge Council area is a really strong area for rentals, like, like much of the UK. There's, a little bit of a sort of rental crisis going on there. There's just not enough in, in the local area. So this one is currently on the market at 350,000. However, I've got a provisional offer accepted at 328,000, as that was the lowest the association were willing to go because they've got grants to pay off. Um, I'm proposing to keep this as a six bedroom HMO and just renovate it back into a good to high standard and um, and then it's got a large communal room and uh, there could be a separate room for utilities and washing machines, things like that. Um, so with the 328,000 purchase, that leaves 72,000. And then after stamp duty and legals, leaves around 54,000 for the renovations, um, which comes in about 300 pounds per square meter, um, which is about 300 pound square foot, I think. Um, so I've got build teams and electricians and all these people in place yep. in Newton Abbott. Um, I've got a really good broker that's sorting out one of our um, small refurbs that we're doing at the moment with bridging and then we've got an exit already planned. He's had a look at this one, he's quite comfortable about exit plans for this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's always good. Okay, so how much will you need off an angel today? 400,000. That's the purchase price. So the purchase price is 328,000. Yep. And then um, stamp duty, legals, and then whatever's left that pot is for the renovations. Gotcha. Okay. And you've got a GDV of 520,000. Yes. Assume that's the commercial valuation. Um, can you tell me how you've calculated that? What yield you've used? What, what's your commercial? So uh, I have put that actually down as the bricks and mortar valuation. This is what I've got from 
estate okay. agents and just desktop valuations at five okay. hundred thousand. As a and house or, of that also, size on that street. Say again. As a house of that size on that street. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, in that sort of area, it's two minutes from the town centre. It's got two garages at the back, large garden. Um, okay. Yeah. And what's your, what's your total cost in again? Including so, the purchase, all costs, everything. Four hundred. Say so four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. Yeah. That's including the refurb of about. That's including 50. refurb, legals, and everything. So yeah. why on earth don't you just turn this into a family home and sell it? Mm. Because it's not really, um, it's just not really set up for a. It doesn't a matter family home. because it will make more money that way. You're not going to get a commercial valuation on an HMO for five hundred twenty thousand right. in that area. Yeah. You'd be lucky to get four hundred thousand. Right. Okay. Right. So you'll make the most money on that yeah. refurbing it. Just smiley, white walls, grey laminate, yeah. new kitchen, spend probably less than 50 grand. Right. Um, mm. And just put it straight back on the market. Yeah. This should be exactly your bag. You know, you're taking a property that people, other, in, other, people, other buyers yeah. don't want at the moment, potential mm. buyers, because mm. too much work to do. That's what you're doing. Sure. You're yeah. a project manager. Yeah. You know, you True. can get in there, you've got all the trades at your fingertips. You can get in there, sort it all out relatively yeah. cheaply. I know it's got to be a good standard. It's half a million quid. It's got to be for Newton Abbotts. That's not cheap. It's mm. got to be a good standard. Yeah. Yeah. And good standards do cost money. I appreciate that. But like Nicholas said, you want a winner here. Mm. Really? Don't I mean, you think? Okay. Yeah, no, and I know I definitely do. It's just in, in my mind, I was always thinking I was trying to build a portfolio, you know, and buying and holding and renting and and there's nothing so, wrong with that. Yeah. But it's horses for courses. Yeah. Recapitalizing sure. and going again yeah. with right. more capital, yeah. bigger deals, yeah. two deals at once. That's yeah. how you grow. Yeah. The thing with this one is uh, there are two ways you can go. Uh, the HMO route, re renovate, so from where it is now to make it into a six room HMO. Um, I mean, I'm looking at the floor plans, they're not en suites at the moment. So I assume no. that you'd want to renovate it and make them en suites. So what, what I was initially thinking is there's two sort of sets of bathrooms, so it would be three rooms to one bathroom setup. I would take the view that, it, that it, if you're going to renovate it to high end, high end actually means en suites. En suites as well, yeah. So my uh, suggestion to you is, which is the greater renovation effort for what sort of uplift? Sure. To take it to a six room HMO, all with en suites, which you'd need for top end, if right. you want top end rents. Yeah. I think that's a, a massive renovation bill mm. for a, uh, dubious uh, GDV right. because of the commercial valuation stuff as opposed sure. to spending less yeah. to make it into a family home because basically if you look at the picture of it, it looks the part. It yes. looks yeah. like yeah. a family home. Yeah. 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 And you've got mm. garages and all True. the rest of it at the back. Yeah. So I think it's an easier, I mean, in this time of the market, do go with the building, go with the deal, as opposed to try to fight it by, right, yeah. by pushing mm. things a square peg. Let it happen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let it happen naturally. Right. And the other thing is, you, with your team, you can get in there quick. Yeah, you know, no, I think we could. Turn get it around done, in three bang months. it on the market. Yeah, yeah. no, our, our builders love this sort of thing. They love going in and doing renovations, new kitchens, new bathrooms, that sort of thing. It's all know. there. Yeah. It's all there. Don't need to be six bedrooms either, yeah. does it? Yeah. You what said would, that you'd, you provisionally negotiated a cash purchase of 328. Yeah. Would you be able to get it at that using finance? And if not, is it just the list price? Um, would that be with bridging? Whatever type of yeah. finance. You know, we, there's lots of different types of finance. But I suppose I'm just looking at it from the perspective of if it was me, mm -hmm. 400 mm. grand is the cost. I, said I wouldn't usually want to put in all of no. the cost in cash. Right. I would like to reduce you know, the cash as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And get um, finance, yeah. So I suppose I'm just wondering, is, would you still be able to get at that price using some sort of finance? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Because I've got quite good relationships with the state agents. I've viewed it a few times. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think if I just went back and said, look, our offer stands, but I'm going to go down this route. I think well, we they don't even need to know, to be honest with you. They're, well, only, yeah. they're only agents. Um, yeah, you if, know, you, if you I, get a mortgage offer as well, yeah, and go, exactly. yeah. I'm, we're taking yeah, yeah. finance. It yeah, like I said, sense. I've got a really, really good broker, so I definitely right. chat to him. Okay. Who would like to start with decision making? Helen, ladies first, would you like to start? No. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I'm not ready to show my cards oh, yet. Oh, for John. goodness <laughs> sake. What is wrong with that? Age before uh, beauty, John. Yeah. Paul, would you like to start? <laughs> uh, He's look, trying to get I think, out of it. I, I, Say no. I, I tell I, you what, I like it. It's a big, ha big rundown house, and I don't think you can go too far wrong with big rundown houses. Do you know where Devon is? It's tempting, isn't it? That's I don't the know the location at all. No, same um, here. 
and mm. and I also have no idea around. It seems a big uplift for not too much work. Yeah, which concerns me a little bit. Right, too good to be true. Yeah, it does seem too good to be true, really? and the fact that there doesn't seem to be a lot of competition for it. Yeah, that says something. A little, I don't know what it red says, flag. but it says something. Yeah, yeah. Red flag. If it's on the market, yeah. Adam, don't worry about that. Uh, look, I I'm going to say no because I think you're going to get offers from others, and perhaps they will be better suited for them. Yeah, cool. No, it's fine. Thank you. I, I don't think there are any problems with converting this back into no. into a house. Great. Um, I think its destiny is better as a house. Um, my offer to you is, uh, we'll provide the money to buy it. Um, you provide the money to renovate it back to a house. Okay. Um, and we'll go halves on the profit. Okay, cool, thank you. You do know it's Devon, don't you? <laughs> you Just check it. Is. Where, okay. Where's Devon in the country, Ranjan? <laughs> North, south, east or west? <laughs> okay, Helen, would you like to go next? Nick, would you like to come next? <laughs> I would love to, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> You know, I like the idea of it, but it is a long way away for me. Right. I have to go and see everything I do. I want to touch and feel everything. Yep. I want to see sure. everything you're doing to help you and try and add as much value. And, and I don't want to go to Devon There's a once decision a month. coming yeah. in a minute. Yeah, yeah, no, I get on. that. That's if, if this was half an hour, an hour from, you know, Reading or somewhere, I'd be all over it. Right, yeah. So I apologise. That's my no, no, that's poor okay. reason on this one. Um, and actually, sure. you've got good offers here. And I'm, I think John, John might you know, come with an offer. And, and Helen might even come up with an offer. Because it's, it's a really easy deal, I think. Right. Um, and 100% okay. house all the way. So it's a no from me, sorry. Right. After all that, it was a no. It is. Right. Um, <laughs> Helen, would you go on, John. Oh, I'll go, shall I? Okay. John, I've got to leave you a few tidbits. <laughs> Um, Adam, I don't care where it is in the UK. I've just bought um, two quite large developments in Scotland. So um, uh, Nicholas gets a, a nosebleed. Uh, if he goes an hour more than home, he has to be home for lunch, I think. Yeah, I do. Um, I've got young his, kids, so I like to be home his, every day. As is lunch at home most days. This is a really simple deal. And um, you do need to get change of use on it, which will take three months. So, so you know, you've got to still allow probably a good year in terms of finance. I know it sounds right. like it should be sooner, but the time you bought it, you've got the planning, done the work, found a buyer, you know, okay. it's gonna be a year. So you've got to bear that in mind on your funding, on your interest. And that mm. does eat up very quickly yeah. some of the profit. So yeah. always be aware of that. And then you want to leave a little bit more longer than you think because things go wrong and so on. Mm -hmm. Buyer falls through, it's another three months. My offer would be, I'll put in the deposit required to purchase it on a bridge, or well, not bridge, but a I can get a bank to do it for us. Okay. Um, you put in the bill costs. Sure. And I think the bill cost will be 50 grand, not 30. So bear that in mind. Okay. And we'll go 50-50 on the, the sale profit. That's assuming that we don't need to go for planning. If we go to planning, it's a ball lake, it's three months. And okay. So, so. So the same as Ranjan. That's basically the same offer as... Well, it's a better, offer, it's better offer yeah. than yours, Ranjan, because it's for me, and I do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, I've already said, you know, I've got property down that way. I'm doing a deal in Cardiff, so it's not for far away. And also... Okay, you've got two equivalent offers. Also, I've got a full-time chartered surveyor, building surveyor, who will help you oversee the project as well. Right, cool. Okay. Nice, thank you. So there's just me, and I'm really tempted I have the slight, like, is it too good to be true? It is a nice, juicy deal. It is quite far away, and I'm not here full time to kind of check on it and everything myself. And I feel like if you'd been a little further on in your journey and I had more confidence, I, I'm, I have confidence in that you're going to go far, but how much input it will take from me now, I just don't think I'm ready to do that. And to be honest, I can't offer anything better than Ranjan or Oh, John, on this occasion, so no, I don't sorry. think it's worth me offering, but um, I'm really keen to follow you. I'm really keen to see what happens with this deal, and uh, yeah, yeah, there cool. you go. You got a decision to Thank make. Thank you very much. So you've got two offers, Adam, and it's entirely up to you whether you take one or take none of them. Okay. Up to you. Um, well, thank you for your offers, um, but yeah, I think Ranjan, I'll Go with you, if that's okay. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh dear. You made the best choice, mate. It turns out that actually Randon's offer was better. Adam, talk to me. How did we get on? Sort of turned the deal into a different uh, different type of deal, but yeah, no, it went really well. Oh, okay.
okay, explain yeah. a bit more. So I that. went in with a, the idea of turning it into a HMO. Yep. Um, and all the investors suggested, forget the HMO, turn it back into a large family house and sell it. Okay, yeah. so a very different strategy there. Yeah. Are yeah, you going to take that on board? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I got a couple of offers. Who are? So I got an offer off John and Ranjan. Fantastic. And in the end, I went with Ranjan. Brilliant. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. So you've done the deal, secured the deal with Ranjan. What's the next step for you now? Um, so a bit more due diligence on the deal, making sure it stacks up um, for the resale value. And um, yeah, hopefully go from there. So it turns out Ranjan's so, offer was better. <laughs> why would Adam not go with my offer? Well, I've uh, even got a full time charter surveyor, oh, building surveyor, who would oversee the project for him. Yeah. I thought that was quite funny. I use multiple <laughs> freelancers <laughs> and get it I done quickly. I don't have a bottleneck. <laughs> You've never been to Devon. Oh. You know what, John? I think, um, I think you need to reflect on that. Uh, I think there's, there's got to be something that. wrong with that. There no. has to be. You know what it's this too is? Far too good to be true. You know what you guys have all missed? Go on. Um, in the too good to be true business. No one likes oh, no, here we go. Tell you, I'll tell you why. Uh, the owner occupiers that have been coming here and looking at that property are looking for an owner occupier mortgage. Yes. And as soon as they get an, try to get an owner occupier Ranchan. mortgage, they can't, they can't get it because we of know its that. existing use. We know that. No, but that, that's that's why the owner occupiers have been. But what about the local developers? Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not. No, the, I agree. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's it's a lovely. The, the, it's the a lovely house. Like it's it. in a good it's spot. Easy Do you like to... the way he kept that till after he'd done the deal? I don't mind losing to Ranjan in central London or within the M25. Yeah. I don't mind. I can live with that. You can live with that. What I can't live with is losing to Ranjan in oh, Devon. In Devon. We've got in stuff Devon. in Devon. Oh, You're losing your touch, John. Thanks so much for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time on Property Elevator.